With this recording, we're going to take a, a very quick look at using the puppet pin. So we're going to start with a basic star shape. And again, I can see the video on using path tool. It's just go to uh, this object, go to star, and then just draw it on a new shape layer. Now here, it's pretty basic, looks good. Um, what I want to do is create some more natural kind of movements, not stiff arm movements. And to do that, I'm going to animate each one of the star points separately. To do that, I'm going to use a tool called the Puppet Pin tool. Select it here. In terms of settings, make sure Mesh Show is turned on. I'm going to reset these to the default. So Expansion is usually set at 3, Triangles at 350. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit on my star so we can see it a little bit more easily. Move this over. Uh, I think 2400% is probably a little bit too much, but fit to 100 will do. And what I want to do is look at um, adding points that we can, so we can animate each one of these star points separately. Now I'm going to start by clicking in the upper point here, and you can see when I do that, it creates a mesh, which we can see because show mesh is turned on. And, uh, and now we can look at these other two settings. So triangles determines the number of triangles that you're going to have. You can increase it, and you're going to be able to do uh, more subtle movements if it's higher. Now with more complicated shapes, it's going to cut down on the response time, the higher this number is set at. This is a pretty simple shape, so I'm going to set it quite high at, at 1,000. Now, uh, I also want to check and see how it is kind of snapping to my shape. And here I can see this is the edge. And my shape actually extends a little bit beyond that. So what I'm going to do is increase the amount of expansion. Now, 48 is obviously way too much. So I'm going to make it 10. And now if I check my shape, I can see that it's fully covering all the edges. And that's pretty much what I want. Um, I want to make sure that when I move my shape, that I take all of the shape with it. Okay, and I'm just going to add uh, some basic movements. So uh, one thing I want to point out, that if you have a single point and you, you're moving your shape, you're just moving the position, you're not actually animating anything. Uh, you need to have a minimum of two points to, to really create an animation. So here I'm just going to add some to the edges and one to the center to kind of lock it into place. Now uh, when I created those points, I created keyframes at each one of those. And if I just select the layer and hit U on the keyboard, I can see I now have four uh, pins. I can select them and you can see that circle turns solid yellow when it's selected in the layers palette. And I can go in and create animations around them. Now I'm going to see, say it's very handy to also name your pins so that you know what each one represents. Puppet pin 1, 2, and 3, I don't think that's very helpful. So uh, I've named my top one. This is my left, um, left middle. So I'm going to call it L middle. This is my right middle. So I'm going to call this right or R middle. And puppet pin four is my center one. So that's going to be center. Uh, it just matters that you call them names that you can recognize when you're going into animate. So here I've got, um, I've got my first four. Let's add maybe uh, two at the bottom. So again, go back to the puppet pin tool. Add one down there. That is going to be my bottom left one. So I'm going to call it L B. I'm going to get very concise here. And this one is going to be my right bottom. So I'm going to call it R B. Okay. And uh, again, to bring up all animated properties, just to select the layer hit U and it disappears them and appears them. Okay, so here I've got keyframes at zero, zero. And if I want to animate a property, I'm just going to move the playback head 
just a tiny little bit, maybe just a couple of frames. And I'm going to create a shift in my arms. Now, actually, before I do this, um, if I want my star to kind of wind up in the same position as it uh, started in, um, it's not a bad idea to copy those first keyframes and then just move to the position where you want them and paste them. So now you can see at four seconds, my star is back to being a perfectly upright, rigid star. Okay, so um, here, and, and you can do that at any point in time. What I might also want to do at this point, say um, at four seconds, I not only want to um, have my star looking the way it did at the beginning, but I also want to have it maybe at the other side of my composition. All of my pins are selected, so I can actually go in and move the entire star over. And you can see what's happening here. I'm getting an animation as it moves across, and that's mainly because I haven't gone in and animated the other properties yet. Okay, so I have a little bit of a wave there at the beginning. I want to go in and do that, do some more on that. So I'm going to go in and create some individual changes in terms of how things are positioned in my star. So I'm, this is going to be you know, quite minute in terms of how, it's, um, how it affects my animation. So this would be essentially frame by frame animation because I'm doing it on a very much a, uh, a custom basis on each individual frame I'm selecting. There is some tweening going on, but for the most part, we're looking at something that is a little bit more time consuming. It's a little bit more labor intensive, but hopefully, you know, with the results, it's going to be, give you better results in the end. Well, maybe not better, but more uh, organic, let's say. And organic sometimes means messier. It sometimes means less precise, but in this case, let's hope it means better. So let's see what I have so far. So this is my star movement. And again, you know, stars don't have a typical way of walking. Normally they just twinkle up in the star. So whatever changes we make here, I mean, we can really just pick something that we think is, is going to look good. Now, I, I'm going to say that um, if we follow something that is closer to like a human style of walking, we'll probably think that that looks more natural because that's what we're used to seeing. Not just uh, in terms of seeing other people walk, but you'll notice um, most animated characters, uh, everything from you know, Mickey Mouse to uh, Homer Simpson, they have a style of walking that tends to be based on a bipedal style of walking, which is two legs, even if a mouse normally walks on four legs. So it's based on how a person actually walks. Okay, and again here we've got you know a lot of movement going on. I think I want to make my star do the splits at this point. So I'm going to just make it a little bit broader. I'm going to squash it down a little bit. And again, you know, you have a lot of kind of leeway in terms of how you do this. And again, if you look down at the layers palette, uh, remember everything is uh, done as a, that you do here creates a new keyframe. Okay, so I've got got most of my star kind of creation here and you can see that this can take a long time. I'm going to start to do bigger jumps. So here I'm going to, uh, let's see, I'm going to select everything at once. Now that happens sometimes when you're selecting multiple pins with the shift key, you get that sudden jump. Just do command Z or control Z right away to undo that. And again, it still leaves it selected, but it gets rid of that weird kind of distortion. And uh, so I've got the entire shape selected. Click over a pin tool. I'm going to move it up. 
And when it gets to the kind of apex of that movement, I'm going to go in and, and do a little bit more kind of distortion. I want it to look like there's some forward momentum. He's jumping up. He's a star superhero. So he jumps up, and then I want him to come back down at this point. So again, it's a matter of shift clicking all your pins. And again, if you get that weird distortion like that, just undo it, Command Z. And I'm going to move the entire thing down a little bit and then go in and here I'm going to reverse how that works so the leg is coming down and he's landing. Okay, so let's see what I have now. So again, generate a RAM preview. I'm going to deselect that layer because I want to see it without the animation options around it. And I can see exactly what my star looks like. Okay, so there is no natural movement for stars, but this gives you kind of an idea how, um, how the, the puppet pin tool works. Now, the other thing I want to point out, we have a basic kind of movement here. Uh, this isn't necessarily the, the best way to animate everything. Uh, for example, if you just wanted the star to move across the composition and you didn't want uh, all the points to wave in a kind of a bendy way, then you'd be much better off and be much more efficient and faster just to do a position animation. So keep these things in mind. There are different uh, animation tools for different jobs and sometimes uh, a basic one is going to work better than a more complicated one such as the puppet pin tool.